Okay, so let's talk about custom validation rule strategies in Laravel. There are a ton of ways in Laravel that you can define out your own validation rules and not one single one is correct. There are lots of different reasons to use multiple or uh, different ones for different scenarios. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the very, very simplest, which is closure based uh, validation rules directly within a validation method. And then we'll look at doing things like globally registering things, perhaps if we need to make reuse of things, making uh, classes if we need to organize our code a little bit better, then look at rule objects, but also then go on to more advanced use of rule objects as well. So we're going to start out with a really simple closure based rule in this part. And I have a form over here. Uh, which is just posting through to this random controller. It doesn't matter what this is doing at the moment. You can see that we've got a password form here and our action is to make sure that the password uh, matches the current user's password. Now, the reason that I've chosen this is you probably don't need this in any other place, uh, but when your user is changing the password, you may do. But if you don't, then a closure based rule is absolutely fine for this. So let's just cover this really quickly. Of course, the uh, validate method is available over on the base controller for our uh, all of our controllers. And we're going to validate out this password uh, field. Now, normally we would, of course, pipe these. So we'd say required. And then if it was an email address, you can pipe in that rule any of them rules that are available. But if we want closure based, we need to provide the rules in array because uh, we of course need to provide the closure itself as this second uh, item in the array. So inside of this closure, then we get three things. We get the attribute, which in this case is password. So you can use that to build up your validation rule uh, or validation message. You get the value, which of course is really, really important. We need to actually know what the password is to be able to check. And we also get another closure passed into this, which is uh, fail. You can call this whatever you want, but we're going to name this fail. And essentially this allows us to call this if it fails. Otherwise, we just assume that this passes. We don't even need to return a true or false value. So let's bring our user variable that I have just up here into scope because we're going to need this to compare the password. And let's do a little check here. So we're going to do a falsy check because remember, we have this fail closure. So we're doing a f uh, starting things out with a faulty check. And I'm going to use a hash function here or hash uh, facade rather uh, to check that the value, which is the value we've given in the form, is uh, valid for this password. So that's just basically just checking that this hash matches and that's already imported there. Now, if it doesn't, which is of course what we're doing, we're then going to invoke this fail callback and we can say something like current password is incorrect. I'm not going to go ahead and use the attribute because uh, this is a very specific rule. We don't really care much about uh, anything else being current. So we're just going to leave it at that. Now, uh, if all goes well, we're just going to go ahead and redirect back to the dashboard with pass just so we can see that this works. So if I go ahead and hit this, of course, the password field is required. If I go ahead and type a load of rubbish in, uh, of course, current password is incorrect. And if I type my correct password, which is literally just the string password, you can see that that passes. So my advice with rules like this is just keep these here for now. It doesn't really matter if your control is getting a little bit too big. Um, of course, uh, you know, once you need this rule again, then you can refactor and you can move it along to a custom rule. So that's a closure based rule. But what happens if we want to use this again? Well, that we have a couple of options and we're first of all going to jump over and look at globally registering rules by extending Laravel's validator.